And we are recording this evening's meeting so that we can post it on the project webpage for folks who couldn't attend in person. Um, Ray, it could be as, um, Kristen, do you see a phrase on? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks. I was technology challenged there. I was muted and I couldn't see myself on the screen. Oh, yep. We can hear you. Great. Okay. I, are, am I on? You are. Okay. Okay. Well, well, well thank you for um, asking me to kind of join this morning, kind of lay the framework of what we're trying to accomplish. Um, one of the things, I, I, by way of introduction, my name is Ray Yacobi. I'm the chair of the uh, Acton Planning Board. Um, and we have had a joint meeting with the, the main of the planning board kind of reviewing what it is we're trying to do. So uh, I'm, I'm a big proponent of trying to lay out for the audience, what problem are we trying to solve? Why are we even doing this? Okay, so um, I think it, it the, uh, the premise here is fundamentally is trying to create a framework and or a what I would call a strategic plan for the powder mill corridor. Um, what we see today in the corridor is a function of the current zoning and by definition what zoning rules do is they incentivize development in a certain way. Um, and what we're exploring here, and I want to uh, commend both the, the planning staff, so both Acton and Maynard, uh, and I want to acknowledge kind of the cooperative uh, effort that we're trying to do with the town, which because I think is critically important because this area straddles the two towns. And so what the, the effort here is where we would like to see a zoning overlay district created um, and we're spending a lot of time uh, trying to get community input is to, let's say 10, 15, 20 years from now, what would we like this area to look like? Um, and rather kind of be a hodgepodge of what has grown up uh, is what this effort's all about. I wanna also acknowledge, I really uh, commend this, the staffs, the planning staffs of both towns, because I think they've done a lot of groundwork uh, in terms of, analyzing what it is, what we're trying to do. There's a combination of housing, retail, recreation, et cetera, because it could be um, a lot more than it currently is. Um, so uh, this framework, again, will hopefully transform in a fundamental way, the whole powder mill corridor from kind of a hodgepodge of retail and auto into something that's more, more vibrant for the whole community. And that's all I have to say right now. That's great. Thank you so much. Um, and now, Chris Alter Arsenal uh, from Maynard Planning Board, if you're on, would you like to say any words? Uh, thanks, Andrea. Um, first, I'd like to thank the MAPC for all the effort and support they've given us in this effort over the past year or so. Um, and that's about as how long as Maynard has been engaged in this effort. It's been, been about a year now uh, when we started to take, take a hard look at this. Um, it, this is an important effort for the town of Maynard because it, it touches upon uh, a number of the goals that are listed in our master plan. So for example, there's a number of economic development goals that are part of our master plan. And as another example, we have goals about connection points with the environment, um, people being able to connect themselves with the environment, open space goals, things of that nature. And so I see this as as a way to connect a lot of the different goals in our town um, and to push an initiative that, that, can, that can really move us ahead um, looking towards the future. So, uh, and I, I don't wanna to take too much more time because really the, the part, this, this is about hearing from the public. Um, and so I'm really interested in, in doing that. So thank you, Andrea, for your time and thanks for everyone that has put effort into this thus far. Great, thank you. I think those are two great overviews. Um, for why we're here tonight and why we want to hear from you all. Um, so a little bit, this was alluded to, but this is a really great effort with a large project team, a joint effort between Acton and Maynard. We have three planners from Acton, Kristen, Kayla, and Nora, two from Maynard, Bill and Julia, and then three staff from MAPC, myself as the project manager and the senior planner for the, pro the project. And then Emma Battaglia is a housing planner who will be providing her expertise in housing and mixed use developments and Adi, a senior transportation planner to help with some of the streetscape improvements and sidewalk improvements. And all of this work is being guided um, as 
Ray and Chris mentioned by the two planning boards, Acton and Maynard, and we had a really great joint planning board meeting um, earlier this month to really kick off this next phase of work. So now we want to pause and give folks a chance to tell us who's in the room. Um, Emma's going to launch a poll. It'll pop up on your screen and you can fill out. Um, we want to know why you visit Powder Mill Road how frequently you do. And then we also ask some demographic um, questions just to get a sense for who's in the room. We like to ask, you know, things like age and income to just have us compare to the population to make sure that we have a representative um, group through our engagement process. So answer the questions that you feel comfortable answering. We'll give you everyone a couple minutes to do this and then we'll see what we have. <coughs> And it looks like we're up to 48 participants, which is fantastic. We had almost 90 folks register, so I think we'll have a full virtual room. Hmm. This is great. We have about 60% reporting, get a few more seconds out there for folks to give us their responses. All right, we're almost there. All right, I think we have everyone that can do the poll. So if you, Emma, do you mind stopping the poll and sharing? And it looks like, so the first question, why do you visit Powder Mill Road? Uh, about two thirds, shop along the corridor, that's good. About a third, live along or adjacent to the corridor. It's great to have some residents in the room. Uh, about five folks work along the corridor and six visit for recreation. So oh. lots of uses happening. Um, the next question, how frequently do you visit Powder Mill? About a third every day, 29% once a week, about a third on a monthly basis, and one person lives on the corridor, so that's great. Um, and then I thought it would be kind of fun to see who, if you're a resident of Acton or Maynard, and looks like we have a pretty good split, about a third from Acton and 19 folks from Maynard, and then a few that don't live in either but are joining us, so a good mix of things. Thanks for participating. Alrighty, so now that we've gotten a sense for who's in the room, let's get into the, the meat of the presentation. Uh, so as was mentioned, this is a phased project. So phase one was a redevelopment strategy. Um, looking at, as was mentioned, the, you know, a lot of things are happening along the corridor. There's been a lot of um, interest in development, a lot of new development. And so the towns really saw an opportunity for, this area to have a more comprehensive uh, vision and approach to really update the zoning to make it reflective of what current residents want. This map shows the orange outline is the study area. So it's about a mile and a half corridor, a half mile in Acton, that's this area here, and then about a mile in Maynard. Um, it's right along the Assabet River, which is a great asset for this corridor. There's the Acton canoe launch, and then as I mentioned, there have been a few um, developments that have really been catalysts for this area. There's a new 40B mixed housing development going in um, right here. There's the future Beijing Royal School site. A new co-op is going in and the Victory Plaza with a, water, a cool waterfront deck. And then there's a mixed use development as you get closer to the downtown area in Maynard. So a lot of opportunities, a lot of um, catalyzing development to be an impetus for this project. Um, so we're kind of curious if you were around for phase one, we have another poll here. If you participated, there were a few forums as part of part phase one. Um, there were some interviews and focus groups done. So um, we were just kind of curious who might be folks that are returning. No. Looks like. You know what phase one is. All right, so this is good. About two thirds of folks that are on tonight did participate in phase one. So that's great. Thanks for coming back. It's exciting probably to see phase one being implemented. 
Um, and about a third were are new, so that's great. Um, we're happy to have you and continue working on this. So um, we wanted to share the findings from phase one. The final plan was finished earlier this year. You can go take a look at that and all of the phase one materials on this website that's um, linked here. The plan is, um, it covers a lot of different topics, uh, has some opportunity areas and recommendations. There were three main um, efforts that went into the phase one redevelopment strategy. There was a market analysis conducted, a zoning analysis, and then as I mentioned, some community engagement to really inform what, what would um, happen moving forward. So we wanted to share the findings from the two analyses that fed into the, the existing conditions. The market analysis really showed that the powder mill corridor has lower retail and industrial market rents, but higher office rents. Um, there were higher commercial vacancy rates, uh, about a third for retail and 73% for office, but really low industrial vacancy rates. And uh, the economic development team at MAPC conducted a retail opportunity gap analysis that really showed that there's actually quite, um, quite a lot of opportunity for new retail businesses to go in and fill a need that, for retail sales. Um, so the market analysis really showed there is um, the market there to support new businesses and existing businesses to grow along the corridor. Um, there was also a, a pretty in-depth zoning analysis conducted as phase one. Um, this looked at the existing zoning in both Acton and Maynard and really identified that there are multiple zoning districts with a lot of different intents and purposes that's resulting in kind of a fragmented or lacking sense of place along the, the corridor. Um, looking specifically at the housing types that are allowed, there's really limited housing um, options in the area. So housing growth was kind of maybe stifled. And then also parking and other zoning requirements were encouraging more auto-oriented development and less so making um, more walkable, friendly uh, development. And then in the analysis, it also showed that the not, there were some non-conforming parcels that maybe were subdivided and a little smaller and then regulations changed and now larger lots and um, different parcel sizes are allowed. And as I mentioned, there was a lot of community engagement in phase one, a few forums some interviews and um, focus groups were done. And what we heard loud and clear from the community engagement and public input was that Powder Mill is adjacent to the Assabet River. That's a lovely resource. So let's not hide it, but have more access to it as properties are developed or redeveloped. Uh, a lot of folks noted that there's, it's not the safest to walk or bike or use Powder Mill in other ways. So folks really wanted to see safety improvements along the corridor, adding more crosswalks and sidewalks and bike lanes. Um, housing, as it does often come up, that there needs to be more affordable housing options in um, Acton and Maynard along this corridor. And then also, whenever we interviewed small business owners, we heard a lot of um, needing support for both new and existing businesses to really grow and thrive. So tonight, we wanted to uh, spend a little bit of time talking about what your current zoning in the um, Acton and Maynard allows. I think it's important to remember this is what um, is allowing development to occur now. The redevelopment strategy phase one is forward looking and thinking about how we can make the zoning match what the vision is. So currently, as I mentioned earlier, it's kind of a hodgepodge of zoning. There's some single family zoning along um, Powder Mill and Maynard across from business zoning. There's this industrial zoning where the future Beijing Royal School is going. There's some garden apartment zoning. Um, and then all of the zoning in Acton is this powder mill commercial zoning district. Um, just to show a few pictures of what's what the on the on the ground um, uses are. So there are a lot of single family homes. Um, if you drive down powder mill into Maynard, some smaller scale multifamily. Um, there are a lot of kind of auto-centric uses, some car sales lots, um, repair shops some strip malls like the Victory Plaza. Uh, we looked specifically at sidewalks because part of this project is thinking about how we can improve that. And you can see here, this picture on the left is when we did a site visit a few weeks ago. There are sections of Powder Mill that don't have any sidewalks or there are some sidewalks that are kind of really close to the, the mode of travel with cars. And then you can see there are some that is just kind of in the middle of the parking lot. Um, we also looked at Assabet River. If you've walked along the back of some of the properties along the Assabet River, this is um, behind the Victory Plaza. 
you can see like if you look to the right there's a beautiful view of the Assabet River and if you look to the left it's behind a commercial building sort of hidden away there are the dumpsters um so as I mentioned during phase one people said the Assabet River is beautiful let's try to open it up and it's kind of exciting the Victory Plaza and the co-op that's going to be going in at the end there actually does have plans to clean up the backside of the building and incorporate this waterfront deck so it's already starting to sort of implement things that came out of phase one to make the river a, an, um, an amenity again. Um, the phase one redevelopment strategy also identified some opportunity sites. So two that I wanted to point out this evening were where the 40B development is um, in action, the Powder Mill Place is going. So um, this is a rendering of what that'll look like. This development is going to bring a lot more people, a lot more residents to enjoy the Powder Mill Corridor, go to the local businesses. It's really going to open up the river access in this particular part of the corridor. Um, so that's really exciting and will hopefully catalyze some opportunities in the area. And then the parcel on the right is at the other end of the um, corridor near as you're going into downtown Maynard. And this building is going to be um, redeveloped into a, I think, 29 unit mixed use building. So again, just revitalizing and refreshing some of these older buildings that maybe are past their prime. So in the end, the, the phase one redevelopment strategy uh, included four recommendations. The first being an overlay zoning district. Um, through that process, it was really determined that that allows for the most flexibility for both towns to work together to create a consistent zoning strategy to help shape future development along the corridor, especially, especially in those opportunity sites where we know that redevelopment is likely to happen. So how can the towns really make sure that that's consistent with what residents want in the area? The second recommendation really focused on improving the access to and the quality of the Assabet River, making sure that as development occurs on the river adjacent side, that it's done in an environmentally sustainable way, um, incorporating complete streets features to make sure that Powder Mill Road is safer. This means making sure that there are safe sidewalks and bike lanes, um, thinking about how we can make people move through Powder Mill Corridor because we know it's a it's an important thoroughfare. How can we make sure that that traffic and um, car travel is safer? And then lastly, the fourth recommendation um, is really looking at how can future transportation projects as you know, a, a road or a turning lane is put in, how can those make sure that they're being advanced um, to be the safest and most environmentally sound? So that was phase one, the recommendations that came out of the redevelopment strategy. The towns luckily were able to get funding from us at MAPC, we have technical assistance grants. And then also the State Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs, they do planning grants. And so the um, two towns applied for funding to work on implementation. So how can we um, put together the draft regula regulations for the overlay zoning district? And then also how can we put together design guidance for streetscape improvements, river access improvements, so that as properties do redevelop over time, they include some of those community benefits to reach the longer term for vision for Powder Mill of having it be a safer corridor, a more walkable corridor for those who live along or near the corridor um, so that people want to visit and live there and work there and spend time and not just drive through on their way to somewhere else. Um, so this gives kind of a high level project overview timeline. Um, you can see here we're at the very beginning of phase two with this community forum. Um, like I mentioned, we had a joint planning board meeting earlier this month. We're going to be doing some focus groups with um, special interest groups to get a sense for, you know, what kinds of regulations would work better to advance some of these vision um, goals. And then we'll be working with um, taking all the public input that we received tonight and during the focus groups to go to the planning boards in November and start thinking about the zoning regulations and some ideas for how the overlay zoning district could take shape. And then we'll be coming back in December um, to share the findings from what we heard tonight, the focus groups and the zoning ideas, and really get into the weeds a little more about zoning ideas and regulations um, to help the overlay really take shape after the holidays, we'll be doing some focus groups with um, users, bikers, walkers, um, those who use the river access and have conservation interests to, to focus groups and get a sense for what kinds of policies can 
you know, go along with the zoning to really help um, the development that occurs be holistic and accomplishing the, the overall vision for powder mill. And then um, we'll be going through the process with the planning boards to have a draft overlay zoning district. And um, all of this will have to be considered at town meeting, hopefully in spring of 2024. So what is an overlay zoning district? If you're not a zoning nerd like the planners on the call, then you may not know what an overlay zoning district is. Um, this is really a tool that um, communities can use to, as Chris mentioned, implement their master plans, implement their planning documents. It's a tool that kind of sits on top of the underlying zoning district and allows for um, the zoning to really be tailored to unique neighborhood needs. So not all zoning regulations need to apply to the whole town. It's, it's nice to have a tool to customize them based on a unique neighborhood. Um, requirements will supersede that of the underlying zoning. So thinking back to that map with the seven zoning districts, that will go away and instead we'll have an overlay zoning district that's consistent with both towns. Um, there's also an opportunity with overlay zoning districts to build in incentives for developments to make sure that community benefits, things like new sidewalks, um, new street trees, things that make a community you know, more desirable can be um, included. And then it also can include both mandatory and optional requirements. So it can be a very flexible tool to achieve the, the end result of what a community wants through zoning. Um, some of the things that are addressed are those that you find in a no zoning bylaw. Things like use regulations, a use table that stipulates what kinds of uses are or aren't allowed. There are special pro provisions for housing to make sure that you're allowing the types of housing that you want to see in a, in a specific area. There are parking requirements that can be relaxed or not in an overlay zoning district. And then there are things like dimensional standards, design guidelines, landscaping buffers, and screening that really help to look at site-specific, how does a, a development take shape to make it consistent with the neighborhood. Um, so looking at use regulations, uh, as I mentioned, there's a lot of different zoning districts currently. So part of our work as MAPC doing this um, will be to look at the seven different um, districts and really get a sense for what's allowed by right, what's allowed by special permit, and what, what should be allowed. And this is where we need your input tonight. Um, we want to consider incentivizing pedestrian-oriented uses, like I said, to make this area a little bit more walkable and cohesive. And so tonight we were hoping to first get a sense from you all, what kinds of uses would you like to see along Powder Mill Road? We'll take this input and look at what's currently allowed and this will help inform the overlay zoning district. So we have another poll that you can respond to. Um, if you see some, if you have something in mind that you'd really like to see along Powder Mill, but it's not in the list, we encourage you to put that in the chat box and then we can take that into account as we look over all of the responses this evening. We'll give folks about another minute. It looks like we have nearly half of responses. All right, a couple more seconds. All righty, we have about 77 recordings, so. All right, we're at 81%, so I think we'll call it and continue to put your um, things that you want to see in the chat box. We can continue to collect that. But if Emma, you want to share the results. 
So thank you, everyone. It uh, looks like a lot of folks want restaurants. That's 81%. Um, about 69% want some more retail shops. 64% want more housing options. 58% uh, want arts and culture uses. And 56% want neighborhood services like grocery stores. And about half want mixed use as well, where residential and business uses are in the same building. So that's great, a good mix of things. And that's, I think, pretty consistent with what we heard in um, phase one as well. So, so we'll take that input and consider that as we continue to refine the types of uses that are good around um, powder mill. Uh, the next thing that the overlay zoning district can address is housing. So we know that both of the towns have done recent housing production plans. You have master plans that have a lot of housing policies and that you want to make sure that you're expanding the housing choices and the affordable housing in your communities. The overlay zoning district can build on what you've already done through inclusionary zoning and other incentives that exist in zoning to continue to increase affordable housing. Um, the overlay can also make sure that housing options are expanding affordability for everyone. If you have more options, then that can help everyone across the board. And it also can help to create a built-in customer base to support the businesses that exist along Powder Mill Road. Um, and then we can also um, be creative in the overlay zoning district to make sure that there's certainty in the permitting process and flexibility in site design so that when developers or those interested in um, building on their properties, they have a little bit more certainty in the process. So we wanted to first ask who has housing needs in Acton and Maynard? Um, this polling question gets, gives us a sense for, you know, as residents and people in Acton and Maynard, you know, what are your experiences looking for housing, either your personal experiences that those you've heard from your friends and family, um, who has housing needs in Acton and Maynard that are maybe not met, but through the overlay, we can try to meet those housing needs and address those. So we'll give folks a few minutes. All right, we have about 70% reporting. Let's see if we can get up to 80. All right, I think that we have everyone that can respond right now. We wanna share those responses, it looks like. The top response, 84% uh, said people with lower incomes have housing needs. That makes sense with housing as expensive as it is these days. 72% uh, said families. So that's really helpful. It's a housing unit size. And um, let's see, 69% said seniors, another 66% said single people and 63 young adults. So this is really helpful and gives us a lot of feedback for the types of housing that should and could be um, allowed and encouraged through the overlay. All right, um, so we wanted to hear from you who you think have the housing needs. We also wanted to point out that, as I mentioned, both towns recently have done housing production plans and part of a housing production plan includes a housing needs assessment, um, an exercise that pulls a lot of census data, housing information and data to really get um, into the weeds about who has a need based on that data. And Acton's housing production plan uh, really highlighted that there needs to be more deed restricted affordable housing for seniors, families, and people with disabilities. So that's right on par with what you all said. Um, affordable group housing was called out as a need for people with disabilities, and then just a better mix of housing choices all around rental land for purchase for people at all income levels. Maynard's housing production plan um, had some similarities. 
So more deed restricted affordable housing for seniors and people with extremely low incomes, those earning the, the least amount. Um, smaller housing types for seniors and first time home buyers. So that reflects um, what we saw in the poll. And then affordable rental options to alleviate cost burden. Um, and cost burden means that you're spending more than 30% of your income on housing. So looking for ways that we can allow people to spend less on housing and more on other things that they need in their life. So not surprising that the poll is pretty consistent with the housing production plan findings and what um, the towns heard through that public process. Um, so now our next poll is getting at housing options. And this is where we tie back to zoning and the use table and what uses are allowed. But what kinds of new housing options would you like to see to provide for those housing needs? So we have another poll that has different housing options. You can have housing as part of mixed use developments or townhouses, multifamily of different scales, two, three, or four family, um, cottage cluster. So if you can answer this poll and tell us what you think would be great for a future powder mill road. All right, we're just about there. All right, we have about 84%. So it looks like um, if we want to share these results, 76% uh, say that they would like mixed use. Uh, that's where residential and commercial are together. About, I think the next one, 65% would like to see uh, townhouse development. And then from there, it's kind of even. So we have multifamily, adaptive reuse for historic buildings, uh, two family duplexes, uh, about 43% and 46% for cottage cluster. So a good mix of things. Um, so now I'm going to stop talking. You've heard me talk for a while. And I'm going to hand it off to my colleague, Adi, who is a transportation planner. And we'll talk to you now about parking and transportation considerations. Thanks, Andrea. And good evening, everyone. Can folks um, hear me OK? All right. So I'm. Um, Appreciate the opportunity to be with you all here tonight. My name is Adi Nochur. I'm a senior transportation planner at MAPC. And um, as you've heard tonight, and as you have no doubt experienced yourselves, uh, Powder Mill Road as it stands right now is a very auto-centric corridor. It's a corridor that has some uses along it and some destinations, but is largely kind of a drive-through right now. So as we wanna create that mixed use environment, as we just heard about um, from the last poll, more of a mixed use kind of environment with a mix of residential and commercial to create more of that um, live, work, play kind of destination. Uh, what's the kind of transportation and land use um, infrastructure and policy that's going to enable that? So I want to share um, a few things with you tonight. So um, of course, one of the hot button issues in every town we work in is parking. And uh, quite frankly, if you build and zone for cars, you'll get more cars. So if you are interested in thinking about um, a mixed use environment that really enables um, different ways of getting around besides just the car, we're gonna really have to take a close look at some of the parking ratios and minimums that exist in the current zoning. So that's something we're excited to dig in on a bit more. Um, you know, The more parking that you require or the more parking you build, uh, the more cars you're going to get. So that's something, again, we're going to want to review to make sure that we're balancing our car travel alongside the mix of uses and the different types of travel modes that people are using to get around. And I'll say a little bit more about that in a moment. 
Um, in addition to thinking about how much parking you have, we also want to think about where that parking is located from an urban uh, design perspective. As things stand right now, you have a lot of parking lots fronting a number of the properties on Powder Mill Road. Um, so it feels like you're just walking across the landscape of parking lots. It's not exactly um, a pleasant place to be from a walkability standpoint. So we want to think about how we can require, maybe require parking alongside buildings or in the rear of buildings. But again, um, that's going to come with different trade-offs. If you have parking to the side of buildings, um, you can have buildings that are located closer to the street, which is great from a walkability perspective. But if you have parking to the side of buildings, it might mean you need to walk that much longer to get between different buildings, which can detract from the walkability. Um, so we're again, we're gonna have to think about how to balance that. And of course, we wanna make sure that we're not precluding access to the Assabet River, um, which we've heard is a really important recreational asset for the town. And you know, we'll be talking more about river access design and guidelines in future phases of this project. So how can we make sure that if there is parking that we have um, uh, bike walking and biking paths along the river and that folks can get to and from Powder Mill Road to those walking and biking paths along the river. So really gonna to wanna to look at um, where that parking is located and how it doesn't get in the way of walkability and bikeability. So part of that is also thinking about uh, the landscaping. You can see a few visual examples on this slide here, thinking about how we require landscaping buffers um, across um, both within parking lots as well as adjacent to sidewalks and bike lanes and multi-use paths that might be developed in the future. And as part of that, we can incorporate green infrastructure to address stormwater mitigation issues. So we can think about infrastructure improvements like permeable pavements, bioswales, tree canopies that um, can address things like the urban heat island effect that can help absorb stormwater runoff and make it a much more uh, pleasant environment to be from as far as the aesthetics go. So it's not just about safety, it's also about, about access and comfort. So these are all things that we're going to want to keep in mind as we think about um, walkability, bikeability, um, parking, and transit access along this corridor. So let's go to the next slide. And as you heard earlier um, and saw earlier, the walking conditions along Powder Mill Road are, aren't great right now. Um, you, there are parts of the corridor that have limited sidewalk or sidewalks or might have sidewalks on only one side of the road or um, where the sidewalks do exist, they are, they're in pretty poor uh, condition. You can see on the left that here's an area where you don't really have a sidewalk and you have cars, I think from one of the auto dealerships that are sort of encroaching on that pedestrian area. So really improving the pedestrian infrastructure and creating zoning that enables that is going to be a really key consideration moving forward. Um, as I mentioned earlier, crosswalks are limited and sometimes where you do have crosswalks, they don't go anywhere. As you can see in this middle image where we have um, your illustrious planning staff, uh, Bill and Kristen here, um, who, who have been just fantastic to work with, but uh, we need to create I'm crosswalks working, I don't know why. Them where they need to, to help them get to where they need to go. Um, so even where you, where you do have crosswalks and you have a really nice um, ADA uh, detectable panel, so you know, we want to think about the ADA issues as well, we need to make sure that we're creating the infrastructure that actually enables people to get to where they go, where they want to go and where they need to go. And again, um, on the far right, you can see another example of this where you have a sidewalk that's not in great condition and you have a, um, uh, the pedestrian uh, path is across a, dr a driveway uh, where the fast food restaurant is, but you don't have a crosswalk there. So um, a lot of room for walking improvements along uh, the Powder Mill Road corridor. So that brings us to um, our next poll uh, on the next slide. We've heard a lot in from phase one that safety along Powder Mill Road um, and transportation safety is a really important priority. So we wanna hear from you in a little bit more detail, what would make Powder Mill Road safer to walk or bike along? So we'll open up the poll. You can see a number of the options there, uh, more crosswalks, more sidewalks, providing pedestrian signals, bike lanes, reducing vehicle speeds, and improving sidewalks and crosswalks where they do exist. So feel free to select all that apply and we'll keep this poll open for a minute or so. All right, we're at just about 60% participation. So we might keep this open for another 30 seconds to get a few more folks to respond.
you want to give it another 20 seconds or do you want to close the poll? All right, well, thanks to everyone who responded, about 86% of you responding just now. And I think we can see um, overwhelming support here, 90% of you indicating that improved sidewalks and crosswalks, no surprise there. I think that would be a huge benefit to the air study area. More sidewalks, of course, where we indicated that oftentimes you might only have a sidewalk on one side of the road. So can we do more to build more sidewalks? Um, Pedestrian signals in certain areas could make a big difference, 63% of you indicating that, 60% um, um, indicating support for more crosswalks, 58% uh, for bike lanes, and about half of you indicating that reducing vehicle speeds would, could also make it safer. So all of those are things that we can definitely take a look at and make more detailed recommendations about as this process moves forward. So thanks to everyone who responded. We'll move on to the next slide. So moving from the what to the how, how can we improve walkability and bikeability and transportation infrastructure along Powder Mill Road? So what are some of the opportunities before us? And I think we're I'm pleased to say that um, Acton and Maidard are, um, are on the ball here. Both uh, towns have adopted what's called uh, Complete Streets, which is a policy framework to accommodate roadway users of all ages, abilities, and travel modes. So whether you're walking, whether you're biking, whether you're taking transit or whether you're driving, uh, Complete Streets is really about making sure that all road users can get around in a way that's safe and sustainable. And I believe both towns have actually received um, infrastructure funding from the Massachusetts Department of Transportation's Complete Streets program to um, implement Complete Streets projects in town. So this is something that both your towns and your planning staffs have um, experience with. And so Complete Streets, um, can look like a lot of different things in a lot of different places. You can see a couple of images on the left from downtown Franklin, Massachusetts, where um, a number of us on the MAPC team have had the opportunity to work on zoning issues and some of these same redevelopment issues that all of you are thinking about. So you can see some of the elements of walkability that make for an attractive uh, environment here. You can see wide sidewalks, you see buildings that front right up to the street, uh, well-marked crosswalks, you can see the landscaping buffers, and you see some of these street level amenities. Um, you can see um, bike racks, um, benches for folks to sit that create that sense of comfort and like it's a place you wanna be and not just um, pass through. So these are some of the elements that we would love to see um, implemented along the Powder Mill Road corridor. And I think you all are very well on your way. Um, the town of Acton has received state funding to create uh, complete streets designs on Powder Mill Road through a different funding stream called the MassWorks program. And we wanna look into opportunities to replicate this in Maynard as well. So what are some of the design guidelines that we can be thinking about that create um, complete streets elements along Powder Mill Road in, in uh, Acton and Maynard? I think, again, balancing that mix of travel modes is gonna be really important as development increases in this area, because uh, I don't think anyone wants to see a traffic congested corridor. So what does it mean to improve trans transit access along Powder Mill Road, the walking and biking that can enable um, car freeways to get around? And um, when it comes back to walkability, we're also gonna be taking a close look at how zoning regulations and incentives can help create sidewalks on, on private property, recognizing that there's a mix of ownership along this corridor. We have some public land, but we also have um, private interests we're gonna need to work with as well to make this happen. But um, complete streets and some of the design guidelines we'll be recommend recommending as this project progresses will re really give us an opportunity to address these transportation and land use issues. So moving on to the next slide, we want to get another poll from you all to really hear about what are your priorities for transportation improvements along Powder Mill Road. Um, so we'll open up this poll in just a moment here. So you can hear um, some of the uh, options here are um, you know, improved walking infrastructure, improved biking infrastructure, reducing vehicle speeds to improve safety, and improved transit. So you have the opportunity to indicate whether these are highest priority, a high priority, whether you feel neutral about it, whether it's a low priority, or whether it's not a priority at all. So we'll keep that poll open for a minute or so here. And of course, if there are other things um, that aren't on this poll, please input that into the chat so we can be capturing that as well.
All right, we've had, got just over 50% of folks participating so far. All right, we might maybe give it another 30 seconds here. Okay, so I think this gives us a really good picture here. So thanks to um, everyone who's responded, over 80% of you participating in the forum tonight. So I think, um, again, no surprise, we see walking infrastructure is an overwhelming priority for, for most of you. Um, uh, mo almost everyone's saying it's a high, highest priority and a small handful saying it's a high priority and just a very small portion feeling uh, neutral. You know, we can get a more exact percentage breakdown um, later. Uh, looking at the biking infrastructure, a number of folks feeling like it's either a highest priority, a high priority, maybe about half of you with a good folks, uh, um, good percentage um, who might be neutral on that as well. Reducing vehicle speeds, not maybe the highest priority, but a high priority for a number of you with a good number of folks feeling neutral. And then improved transit, um, folks, uh, a good number of folks seeing that as one of the highest priorities just behind biking infrastructure. Similarly, a good number of folks seeing it as a high priority. So maybe about half of you who prioritize improved transit um, and then uh, some, a number of folks who feel neutral about that. So um, the transit piece is something what we're gonna wanna think about as well. Um, I think the town of Acton has had shuttle service along Powder Mill Road in the past. There might be some council on aging vans that service seniors up and down the corridor. So thinking about what improved transit options could look like um, to, to complement the walking and biking and give folks another option to get out of um, their cars and induce uh, car-free travel along the corridor is gonna be really critical. So we don't make sure that we're just replicating the current auto-centric pattern that we see and that, that, and that makes it a really con uh, congested corridor. So appreciate the feedback from everybody and you know, we'll definitely be taking this into account as we dig in more on the transportation recommendations uh, for this project. So um, thanks again, everyone for their participation and I'll turn it back to Andrea to keep us moving. Thanks, Ani. Um, and thank you all for continuing to answer our polls. It's really helpful to see um, what you want to see along the corridor. Um, so the other things that can be included in the overlay zoning district, as I mentioned earlier, are dimensional standards, things like lot size, build two lines, those sorts of requirements, design guidelines. So thinking about how a development looks um, as it's being designed and built and then landscaping buffers and screening. So what kinds of uh, plantings and things can be put in as a property is developed to make sure that it's you know benefiting the community and um, holistically being developed. So these three things are really exciting because oftentimes towns have very inconsistent standards and through this project, Acton and Maynard are really committed to having consistent standards to provide for consistency along the corridor. Um, this also is important because these are things that as a community, you, how you decide to um, regulate this sort of development really reflects the types of developments you want to see along Powder Mill. And so we're going to ask you some questions here in a moment to give us some feedback on the types of development that you like so that we can make sure that the regulations are actually allowing that to happen. Um, we don't want the regulations to be prohibiting things that you actually like to want to see. And then we also um, know that the overlay zoning district through incorporating these things can really build on the successful neighborhood and development characteristics that are already in place along Powder Mill Road. There's a lot of really great things already there and or are in the works. And so how can we build on that successful um, neighborhood and development design to continue to have Powder Mill Road morph into what you want it to be? So the last polls of the evening are kind of fun. So we have a series of pictures of different types of development. And we want to ask you what you think about the, the pictures that we're showing, the design, the developments, and whether you think this might fit in on a future powder mill road. So thinking five years down the road, do you see this maybe, you know, fitting in in some way along powder mill road? So the first one, um, you can tell us if you love it, you like it, you don't like it, you're neutral or you can't decide. Um, and then this can help us to kind of think about from a regulatory standpoint, you know, how can we have this happen? Y'all are so fast now, you're like pull pros. We're almost to 80% already. And looks like 
we're at about half like this design, uh, about a third love it. A few folks are not, not big fans and a few folks are neutral. Give folks a couple more seconds and then we can move on to the next picture. Looks like 88% of folks have responded. We're at 90%. We'll give folks another minute. All right, I think we can close it. About 46% said that they like it and 28% said they love it. So that's great. All righty, so let's move on to the next picture. Um, so these are actually some condominiums um, that are kind of designed as single family looking, but they're actually multi-unit inside. There's some nice landscaping. Um, so what do you think about this? Would this fit in along a future powder mill road? We are almost, to, we hit 90. Give folks another minute or two. I think that's 93%. All right, looks like for this one, if we wanna stop and share, so we've got 95% reporting. 44% uh, of folks said that they like this. 22%, uh, so a few more are not big fans. They just like this. And about 12% said they love it, and 15% were neutral. So great, that's helpful. Move to the next one. All right, um, here's another example of this is actually an apartment building that is modeled after more of a like a single family home, but it has multiple units with some really nice landscaping. Uh, let us know what you think of this. almost to 90% participation. All right, give you all another couple seconds. We're at 90%. All right, so this one, we have about almost two thirds that say they like it or love it. About 20% are dislike and about 20% are neutral. All righty, let's move to the next one. Um, so this one is a little bit bigger scale multifamily with mixed use on the first floor. Uh, this is actually, I think, an example from neighboring Hudson. Um, so let us know what you like, think about this one, whether you think it might fit along a future powder mill road. All right, we're at 90% participating. This one, we have more folks that are in the dislike category, about a quarter dislike, about almost 40% strongly dislike. Uh, about 30% say love it or like it. So this one's a little bit different, a little flipped than the others. So let's go to the next one. All right, here's another example of a mixed use development that's a little uh, smaller scale. Let us know how you feel.
All right, we're at 88%. We'll give folks another second or two. It does look like this one's pretty overwhelmingly. Folks like it or love it. A couple people strongly dislike and a few are neutral. We can end that one. So that's great. And then I think this is our last one. Um, so this one's a little different. It's a rendering, but it shows sort of the scale and the look of another type of multifamily um, development and what that could take a look uh, take shape as. So do you think this could fit along future Powder Mill Road? We're at 88%, 90%. All righty. This one is another that's sort of across the board. So about 40% either like it or love it. About 18% dislike and 23% strongly dislike. And then almost 20% are neutral. So that one's a little bit of a grab bag. So thank you. That was really helpful to give us a sense for the scale and the style that you like to see and something that we can go back to when we are at the drawing board for the overlay, thinking about the types of regulations that allow for those that you like to actually happen. Um, so the last question is thinking about Powder Mill Road as it exists today. Um, what do you think about the existing development pattern, the way that um, houses and businesses are currently there, um, the compactness or not of them? Um, so tell us, do you think that this area could have more people and businesses and should support that? Do you think that it's the current mix is pretty good? The area is maybe already too dense with people and businesses, or if you're not sure, that's fine. You can put that too. And we are at 83% participating. So we'll give folks a couple more minutes to think about it. I know this one's a little tougher than gut, gut reaction to a picture. We're at 88%. So give the last few folks a chance. All righty, we're at 90%, so I think that we can share the results. Um, and it's about half of you think that the area of the Powder Mill Road corridor could and should have more people and businesses. About 18% say that the current kind of density and activity is appropriate and about right. 3% uh, think that it's too dense already, and about a third are not sure. So that's great. That's really helpful information for us. Thank you. So thank you again for enduring all of the, the polls and us walking through what an overlay zoning district can start to address and giving us all of this feedback. It's really, really helpful to get a sense for what you want to see um, and build on what we heard in phase one. Uh, we wanted to share our next steps in the process. As I mentioned, we're going to be doing some focus groups in October to have some more specific conversations. We're hoping to talk to small business owners along the corridor residents along the corridor, and then we'll have a group of developers and realtors, folks who interact more in depth with the zoning regulations to talk a little bit more in the weeds about the regulations. Um, if you are interested in participating in a focus group, please, we encourage you to reach out to us and we can try to fit you in. Um, but these will be more intimate, in-depth conversations, about 90 minutes where we'll get into the, the topics of the overlay zoning district in more detail. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, 
we're going to take all of the feedback that you've provided tonight through the polls and the comments in the chat box. And um, we'll go back as the MAPC team and start to come up with some zoning ideas that we'll work on with the project team and then present those with all of the feedback to the planning boards. And then we'll have a second community forum at the end of the year where we'll share what we heard tonight, what we heard in the focus groups and some of those ideas to start um, getting even more refined feedback from you all about specific things like dimensional standards, design guidelines, sort of the in the weeds zoning um, bits and pieces. Um, I do wanna put in a plug for, we have a web page that has um, all of the information from phase one, including the redevelopment strategy. It has recordings and um, the forums from phase one. The recording from tonight's meeting will be put on the webpage. I know a lot of folks were not able to attend tonight live, but we hope that you can share the webpage, share, share tonight's forum with your friends and neighbors so that we can get as many people engaged in the, the project early on so that the overlay can be what you all want for the community. Um, and then here's our contact information. So again, I'm Andrea with MAPC. I would love for you to reach out via email or you can call if you have any questions once you have a chance to digest tonight or have ideas from the polling questions. Um, Kayla and Bill from Acton and Maynard are also available for questions. So we wanna hear from you. We wanna continue to have your input through this process. Um, we really, again, thank you for spending your evening with us and sending, sending your thoughts, providing the responses to the polls. Um, as I mentioned, if you had any questions, we'll collate those and put an FAQ on the website. Um, and then the recording and the slides will be available shortly after tonight. So thank you again for joining us. Um, we really hope that you learned a lot and were um, enjoying this evening and hope that you have a good evening. And we actually got done even earlier, so you get 30 minutes of your day back. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you.